सो बेसिकली दिस इज अ ट्रेनिंग सेशन और अ ट्रेनिंग मॉड्यूल दैट वी हैव प्रिपेयर्ड आई वुड लाइक टू टेक यू ऑल थ्रू दिस ट्रेनिंग मॉड्यूल एंड टूवर्ड्स द एंड ऑफ द ट्रेनिंग मॉड्यूल we'll have a question and answer session we've also try to include uh, specific systems related to crr 1067 and crr 1068 these are the two uh, types of systems that have been recently supplied to you uh so contents we will first be introducing everest vacuum then we'll be talking about the rule of 2030 the this is the everest way of ongoing improvements third we'll be talking about the pump build and what are the unique features in the pumps fourth we will be talking about the right commissioning practices learn and overcome the common mistakes so what are the typical mistakes that uh, generally we make when we are commissioning such systems then the do's and don'ts how can we further improve and get the best out of the vacuum pumps uh, how can we uh, optimize uh, for efficient operations then we'll be talking about maintenance what are the best practices and what are the common mistakes that uh, we generally make at sites and how we can control them so that we can reduce our total cost of ownership by just making slight changes in our operational knowledge then importance of spare availability at site uh, maintenance programs that are available with everest the annual maintenance and the comprehensive maintenance plans then we'll have a case study in the in your case we'll be discussing your particular uh, case itself matrix and then we'll have q and a and general interaction so i had requested for a 2 hour slot my intention is that i would like to cover this whole presentation say by in the next 40 45 minutes uh covering the basics of the systems that have been supplied into matrix beyond which we will have our q and a session uh, uh and uh, we'll address your issues currently i am joined with my uh, service team uh, sales team and uh, engineering and application team they are all on the call so they'll all be able to add inputs so to start with our mission 555 just a brief so that's our mission at everest uh we continuously want to provide innovative engineering solutions in the entire range of vacuum we want to continuously expand our operations markets and possibilities of collaboration to service our customers better so that's our uh, this mission was launched last year uh, and uh, currently last year we were a 50 crore company our target is that by 2050 25 we want to reach to a 500 crore company by the support of our customers and the way we believe we want to do it is by servicing them better and addressing whatever concerns they have so these are the technical services we have a technical uh, tsg group within the company which works on four key objectives these are the four key objectives which is selection of the idle pump or the pump of choice in accordance with the process next is calculate and optimize operational cost third is right sizing of vacuum pumps for best results in terms of productivity and cycle time so the rule of 2030 that i told you in the beginning works in favor uh, along with uh, these activities uh, and design uh, decide the desired operating vacuum levels for process to get the best yield productive quality and operational cost you see many a times why this activity becomes important or how we differentiate ourselves from any other uh, player in the market is the fundamental of these four objectives that we try to address uh, yeah. along with our customers we try to first understand what problem they are facing what is the pain point and then address that that pain point instead of just selling a 
uh, an equipment many a times uh, we have observed that customers when they talk with us we are able to rightly size the vacuum system for them and give them the best possible solution which in turn optimizes the operational cost so briefly our offerings we are currently in the market offering dry screw vacuum pumps which you are already aware of in using mechanical vacuum boosters industrial engineered vacuum systems which is a combination of both these pumps used together then we also offer liquid ring pumps which are which we call as semi dry pumps not wet systems but these are semi dry pumps because we use it in a special technology then we use oil ring based these are again semi dry pumps rotary vein pumps and now the latest offering that we have in the market is low temperature thermal evaporation Uh, we have recently we are in the process of recently commissioning one such system in uh, clean tech sciences so these are the various uh, photographs of the products that uh, we currently are offering and uh, this system that we have this is the low temperature thermal evaporator uh, which is basically a zld uh, zero liquid discharge uh, unit Uh, self-sustaining completely skid mounted uh, unit our promises our promise to our customers is clean reliable sustainable vacuum improved product yield deeper and consistent vacuum which in many cases when customers are using steam jet injectors or liquid uh, liquid ring pumps they face this problem cost and space saving by right sizing reduced batch cycle times and reduced operational cost so these are some of the systems that we are we we we, we are manufacturing for uh, uh, varied industries depending upon what type of applications are there so what typically to expect why do we say or why what is the rule of 2030 that we promise to our customers so at everest vacuum we believe that by right focus and approach in most cases our customers can target to reduce their operating cost by approximately 20% or more in most of the cases we have reduced cost upwards of 30 35% operational cost as compared to the conventional technology that the customer was already using the second commitment that we have is to increase productivity by 30% or more benchmarking existing conditions many a times we are by a, by virtue of either improving the level of vacuum we are able to increase the yield or by reducing cycle times we are able to ensure that the customer is getting more output in terms of product from the same infrastructure that he is presently uh, that ha- that is presently installed this is when you compare it to conventional uh, technologies uh, our systems so we already have a certificate of registration from government of india we were also national award winner uh, we received first prize in energy efficient pumps category uh, from government of india and uh, our design is registered under uh, the ip uh, law of india we also these dry screw vacuum pumps that we have have also been uh, we have already applied for two patents on this technology so this is patent number 1 that we have applied this works on the technology this were this is a novelty which we have created in terms of uh, sealing that's patent number 1 we are using unique sealing methodology which is very robust uh, and uh, we are able to ensure high levels of vacuum because of that the ultimate vacuum that we are able to deliver to our customers is 0.005 Uh, millibar at blank off because of this unique sealing combination that we have adopted the second patent that we have 
is for a unique uh, manufacturing methodology in terms of mm, the screw. Uh, the screw that we are manufacturing, we are almost 30% more power efficient as compared to conventional or the constant pitch design screw. So for example, if you are using a 300 meter cube pump, the conventional screw will consume about 15 horsepower. We have developed a hybrid screw, which is a combination of a variable and a constant pitch design by virtue of which we are only able to produce, we are able to produce 300 meter cube in 10 horsepower. So it's almost 30, 31% more power efficient as compared to a constant pitch or a conventional uh, screw uh, design. So a brief, I thought uh, before I come to the exact pain points that you are facing at your site, I wanted to give you an introduction of what all basically a dry screw vacuum pump technology is all about. So super screw, as we call them, are dry screw vacuum pumps, which are, which are the latest offerings in the market. There is no sealing fluid within the pump. So the pump from suction till discharge is completely free of any type of lubricating sealing fluid. That is why it is called as a dry pumping technology. The only flu uh, lubricating oil that you find is on the side that is the gear side and on the suction side where the bearings are installed. They are both isolated physically by sealing. This is again different combination of sealing that we have installed. These pumps are completely dry. The basic advantage that you receive, uh, that you achieve when it's a dry system is you have vapor coming in. There is no contamination of vapor when it passes from the system. It flows out and thus there is no contamination because of which you get a very environmental friendly uh, vacuum ecosystem. There is no extra generation of effluent or pollution. As these are completely dry, that is there is no sealing fluid in the working chamber of the pump. These systems are becoming very popular in various industries for clean and oil free vacuum. There is no possibility of suck back. The pump is in line to the latest available technology in the market offering to our customers high volumetric efficiency cover, uh, coupled with lower per meter cube kilowatt, resulting in lower overall cost of ownership and supporting our endeavor of making vacuum as a utility a, rely, uh, a reality. So maybe when I was visiting uh, Matrix, uh, I think late December 2019, that time also I was discussing with Kunal sir and I was telling him, sir, my vision is to see vacuum as a utility. As we have compressed air as a utility, you have third parties with whom you do agreements and you are getting clean compressed air. So our endeavor continuously is towards moving to on that goal where we guarantee uptime to our customers and they are not bothered about the, the, the equipment. They are just uh, uh, concentrating on their uh, core capability that is, that is uh, manufacturing of your product. Uh, it is uh, the market is still uh, maturing up. Uh, we still have a long way to go, but ultimately our vision is to reach there. Hybrid pitch, I have already told you, it's a combination of three pitches. That is the primary pitch, the secondary pitch and the variable pitch that joins. So these two, the first two pitches are common, the last two pitches are common and then you have a pitch in the center that joins. So in, in basic, it's a five uh, stage. There are five stages within a dry screw vacuum pump. Now this is more elaboration about the dry screw vacuum pump. So this is the suction. At the bottom over here you have the discharge. Then you have cooling water that enters from here. This is the breather for the oil plug. 
then there is a seal purge that is there. You have two options. In the latest design, this seal purge has been transferred here on the top. There is only one seal purge. In the earlier designs, you had two seal purge, one on this side and one on the other side. This is the seal that goes towards the mechanical, the N2 seal that goes to the mechanical seal. Then you have a port where you have the TCV, which is the thermostatic control valve. Gear oil that we use as a standard in these pumps is T46 grade. T46 is available in a lot of uh, all standard makes. Then there are some safety instructions that are there on the pump. So we've just highlighted what all is there or how does an idle pump look like. We'll be sharing a copy of this presentation with you. You can probably have a printout of this and stick it around next to the pump or have it in your maintenance department so that it becomes easy for you also to train your uh, maintenance staff. Coming down to the next section in the presentation is commissioning and operations. So commissioning by Everest and its relevance. What does commissioning actually mean? So commissioning is a series of vital checks that is performed as per a systematic procedure laid down prior to the full-fledged operation of the machine. Why commissioning becomes important? It becomes important because it improves the integrity of the system by allowing engineers to identify any areas that need fine-tuning for achieving optimum results. Many a times people make a mistake that we commission but we typically don't commission on load and then load trials are taken by customers themselves. We always tell our customers that whenever you are taking the first load trial, you should have our engineer there. Our service team is fully equipped to be there available to observe and note down any undue uh, situation that arises because of uh, uh, the first, because first initially teething, you may face problems, but once you become familiar with the systems, then this is, then uh, utilizing those systems becomes easy. So commissioner, again, repeating the same customer representative gets training on the machine. There is awareness of the vacuum system and recommended standard operating, operating procedure, which is discussed in length with the customer. The customer gets knowledge about maintenance schedules, operational SOPs, etc. User gets friendly with the system. Like in, if I talk in your particular case, even though you are already using our systems, but because it is an expansion plant that is coming up, definitely there'll be some new operators who will be coming in. Them getting familiarized with our system through our engineers will be... Uh, a much different experience, user experience, than them getting trained on the job. Smooth operation and adherence to SOP by operators. There is a level of seriousness that comes in the operators. They understand small criticalities, which can uh, uh, make a big difference in ensuring that the system is uh, well used and well looked after. The operator becomes aware of the preventive maintenance schedules and uh, there is a personal level of interaction between our engineer and your operator. So in the end, I would like to say a well commissioned system running in compliance to operational SOP can deliver up to three times more service on an average before maintenance. This is, I am talking out of our experience, we've commissioned more than 2000 systems in India now since the last 12 years. Uh, we feel commissioning is very important. Moving forward, the modules to maintain for operation. So the key modules that are there is healthy electrical power supply, N2 gas inlet and seal purge module, instrument air module, solvent flushing module, gas blast module, and jacket cooling water module. I'll be covering these in detail in my uh, future slides, but broadly these are the 
six modules that we need to look into and then you have the utilities that go into the condenser so it becomes very important for uh, proper maintain proper operational maintenance to have all these modules working uh, properly at desired parameters this is again a 3d image of a system and different uh, uh, different equipments being highlighted so we will be sharing this photograph with you i am not get into too much of detail on this i am sure all of you are already aware of most of the equipment that is there in this uh, these are some of the add on modules depending upon you see the basic vacuum pump is standard there is no major difference between the vacuum pump when it is applied in different uh, processes or different what changes is what type of modules do we use so at everest we have about 32 we have identified 32 various modules that work in different permutation and combinations depending upon what type of application or what objective the vacuum pump is being used for vacuum pump in basic will remain common and same it will just be that when we change the permutation and combination of these modules we will be able to change how uh, we are wanting the vacuum pump to behave but in principle the concept of vacuum pump is that it's a positive both the mechanical vacuum booster as well as the dry screw vacuum pump the concept is that these are positive displacement machines which are dry and generate vacuum i will cover what a positive displacement machine means so a checkup cycle before start up of the vacuum pump what is a checkup cycle so before starting what becomes important is to check for the level and quality of oil now these are some notes that have been prepared by our team we will be sharing these notes and internally they will help you as well as your maintenance teams to prepare your localized checklist check for free rotation now this becomes a very important point because earlier i was talking to somebody and he was telling me that uh, our pipes sometimes become choked our pumps get choked when we shut them down so why they get choked i will be covering but it, it in the morning once it becomes very important to see that the pump is rotating free or freely or it is not rotating freely it, has it choked or no uh, cooling water availability these pumps require external cooling because of the heavy compression that they do so cooling water becomes very necessary and important the right temperature and the right quality of cooling water nitrogen gas nitrogen n2 seal purge even though consumption is very low but it become it plays a critical role at the discharge of the pump uh, for the seal at the discharge as well as the mechanical seal at the discharge so there it should be available at the right time instrument air availability is again critical because most of these electropneumatic valves don't operate if right pressure instru uh, instrument air is not available then is once you have checked for all of these then you can start the pump when you start the pump you have uh, the warm up cycle now what does the warm up cycle mean basically as i told you earlier these are dry pumps dry pump means that there is a limited finite clearance between the stationary and the rotary part when the pump runs it reaches an optimum operating temperature say within the first 30 minutes at that time what happens the outside body is continuously getting cooled by water but inside screw has no cooling and because the pump has already gone into vacuum there is no air also which acts as a medium to carry away the heat that time the screws expand 
when they expand they reduce the tolerances between the rotary and the stationary part because of which the ultimate vacuum levels improve and increase so to get ultimate to get the proper ultimate vacuum out of your pump if you start the pump 30 minutes in advance before bringing it into operation it will help you achieve your ultimate vacuum uh, or the process vacuum faster now 30 minutes is a thumb rule in some cases it may vary like if you are in a environment where temperature of the air is very cold ambient temperature is 5 degrees say in baddi uh, which is on hills in himachal there if the pump is being used uh, it'll maybe it'll need to run uh, for some additional time or if it is used in in some hot areas where the ambient air temperature is 45 degrees there so broad give and take 30 minutes is uh, the warm up cycle then so we have already covered part number 1 which is the start up cycle the steps that you need to follow is these next is during operation so during operation these are the steps that you need to check this is the checklist that needs to be followed that is check for any abnormal sound vibration should be monitored oil temperature should be checked then discharge gas temperature plays a very critical role like sometimes when i talk to the customer i understand that my discharge pipe gets blocked because of a uh, process material that accumulates immediately outside the outside the vacuum pump now that starts creating a back pressure on the pump it will lead to two problems a discharge temperature will start rising drastically b if it is not checked in time it will lead to bearing or seal or coating damage so this is the first indicator that there is something going wrong at the discharge of the pump then is checking for condensation at discharge discharge okay condensation at discharge probably i'll be covering uh, in my further slides what we are proposing in your particular case but uh, by monitoring the discharge gas temperature you will get a fairly good idea as to what is the discharge condition next is check for overcurrent drawn by the pump this again becomes important even though all these pumps are equipped and fitted with variable frequency drives and there is a function that monitors uh, the drive that monitors the current uh, continuously till if you are getting if the pump is overdrawing current it gives you a fairly good indication that there is something that is about to go wrong in the pump you can either switch off the pump give us a call or start with your initial investigation next is solvent for intermittent flushing now solvent flushing becomes very critical uh, you can have two types of flushings one is at the uh, once the stop once the pump stops and one is intermittent in certain aggressive applications we recommend intermittent flushing as well so two points that we have covered when you start what to do when you are running what all needs to be taken care of now we are covering the third phase and this is the last phase which is when you are shutting down the pump what all what all is important so at shutdown check for flushing solvent in the solvent tank check for n2 gas at this at the discharge uh, at shutdown time there is a n2 seal n2 inlet purge that opens up n2 should be available at that time nitrogen should be available in certain applications this nitrogen can be replaced by air as well uh, provided the process materials uh, flame uh, is not close to its uh, flash point the pump is operating at about 120 130 degrees it should not happen that the flash point of the gas 
should be there and we are giving oxygen in air which acts so to prevent that our recommendation is always for nitrogen but in in uh, in applications where there is no possibility or you are using a high boiler where the flash point is very high then customers can uh, use air compressed clean compressed or instrument air also instead of nitrogen to reduce the utility cost check for any abnormality there should not be any uh, overcurrent or uh, excessive vibration that should happen within the pump do not press the emergency button while shutting down now many a sites we see that typically operator is leaving at uh, evening shift and he does not want to uh, wait for the shutdown cycle so he'll press the emergency button there is a complete uh, shutdown cycle that is pre programmed into the system if you just press the emergency button it will bypass the whole shutdown cycle that is pre programmed and it will go to uh, go to immediate shutdown that can become a very dangerous case because it will bypass the whole uh, shutdown flushing nitrogen uh, purging cycle so these are the five critical steps that should be followed on shutdown now as i was telling you this is a typical the graph that we have shown over here so for the first two minutes what happens there is only nitrogen purge n2 purge that is entering into the pump this the isolation valve at the suction will switch off and nitrogen will come in from a secondary pipe uh, a tapping that has been provided below the main isolation valve nitrogen will break the vacuum in the system once the vacuum is broken for the first two minutes after that solvent will come in why does this happen because typically solvent whenever whichever solvent customer will use will generally be a low boiler so if i pump in solvent under vacuum that solvent itself will vaporize it will become into a gas and it will not fulfill the purpose of solvent flushing so first we break the vacuum then we flush the system with solvent that solvent selection has to be such so that the process carry over that is there in the pump is miscible in it so solvent flushing will happen for the from the 2 minutes to 10 minutes so approximately 5 to 7 8 minutes solvent flushing will happen after that again nitrogen purging will happen so solvent flushing will stop automatically and the pump will again run under n2 and then there will be a dry run for about 5 minutes before the pump goes into shutdown so a typical example of a 20 minute shutdown cycle is this to make it simple for you it is like when you are cooking food at home so after cooking you typically wash your utensils and then keep them for drying the same case happens with the pumps whenever the pump is running there is so much of process material that comes inside the pump that in this shutdown cycle is like washing your utensil after you have cooked your food if you don't shut down if you don't wash your pump rinse your pump properly before shutting it down next time when you will start it will have excessive build up of the carry over that has come from the previous time now that carry over when the pump is running hot has no problem but when it starts cooling down that carry over starts becoming into crystals those crystals start damaging the internals of the pump it is like i leave my utensil after having food next day morning i start cooking in the same utensil without cleaning it so that utensil will be bad it will not be clean or if i clean it in the morning it will have so much of food accumulated on it that i will have to really scrub and when i scrub i'll start causing scratches on the surface of the utensil if as soon as i have made food i clean it there will be no problem because it's all hot and uh, fresh it will get cleaned properly same 
principle it's as simple as that that same principle works in terms of solvent flushing also so shutdown cycle is one of the most important activities that we can do where to ensure long term life my personal observation a customer who is maintaining very good discipline in shutdown cycle can expect his pump to run trouble free for more than 3 to 5 years i have customers in germany who follow our solvent flushing they are very disciplined 2015 we supplied the first pump to them till today we have had not even a single complaint from them the pump is running brilliantly and uh, they keep placing every one and a half two years they keep placing repeat orders with us and i keep asking them and they are telling me that we are uh, doing flushing absolutely correctly and uh, getting very good life out of uh, our pump so moving on is maintenance the best practice and the common mistakes that we make five golden points for a healthier pump operation so most important being solvent flush it's like cleaning your teeth cleaning your utensils maintaining basic hygiene there is seal to end to seal purge this becomes critical because it improves or enhances the life of the mechanical seal which is one of the most costliest spares in the pump uh, there is the n2 inlet purge this along with solvent flushing they both work in tandem solvent flushing under vacuum cannot work itself you need nitrogen to break or air to break the vacuum uh before you can pump in solvent if you pump in solvent under vacuum it will all uh, vaporize and uh, move out it will not uh, be uh, effective then is gas blast i will be covering this in 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 detail and is, the last one is the cooling water module and what does the tcv do for the cooling water module so i'll be these five points i'll be covering in further detail solvent flushing as i have already told you the basic concept there is a solvent tank then there is a makeup line which fills up the solvent tank then you have another solenoid which uh, uh, has a line going towards the inlet of the pump so i'll start with point number 1 directly solvent flushing after the batch is effective and possibly the best method to prevent any build up or blockage of any process material within the pump this prevents any foreign material accumulation within the pump it is recommended to be implemented along with inlet purge like i told you and to seal purge selection of proper flushing solvent is most important the only singular criteria of selecting the flushing solvent is that whatever carry over is coming into the pump it sh we should be able to dissolve that and flush it out uh, fl and uh, we should be able to dissolve the carry over and flush it out at the shutdown of the cycle a correct installation of solvent flushing module can enhance the pump life multifold solvent flushing module is connected to shutdown cycle at shutdown this module is interlocked through plc programming and it starts automatically like i told you earlier some people make a mistake that they switch off the pump using the emergency in that particular case this module gets bypassed but if you are not doing that then you'll have no problem the solvent flushing module consists of a flushing tank solvent so these are some of the uh, you are already aware of most of these in point number 5 so the last line being done right it, you can have some of the most promising results by this one one point itself next is n2 seal purge this is applicable when you have corrosive uh, corrosive environment i will cover this point in detail uh when i show you the cross section of the pump uh 
uh, seal purge is highly effective in very corrosive environments. Next is inlet uh, N2 inlet purge. So this works along with the solvent flushing. The objective and the purpose I have already explained to you. You can also replace this by air, instrument air, if you feel that your gas, uh, your vape, the process vapors that you are using will not reach flash point because the only difference between N2 and air is that in air you have oxygen, uh, presence of oxygen, whereas N2 is totally inert. So like I told you during solvent flushing module, this will start before solvent flushing and continue till towards after solvent flushing to ensure the pump has totally dried off when we are shutting it down. The internals of the pump have dried up when we are shutting it down. Now next module which I believe we are not effectively utilizing in matrix is the gas blast module. Now what does the gas blast module do? I'll cover these points. So this is typically temperature. Uh, this is the curve line where you have vapor and liquid. Now what is happening inside the pump is there are five different stages of uh, compression, five pockets in which compression is happening. It works in transport mode. So one, two, three, four, and five. These are the five pockets. One is suction and five is discharge. And then you have two, three, four in between. This is the line or the curve of that separates the vapor from liquid. So typically what happens when there is very heavy compression that happens in the screw vacuum pump, the vapor gets converted into, there is a tendency of the vapor getting converted into liquid. Once that vapor gets converted into liquid, it, it causes nuisance. So our objective number one is that to maintain vapor in vapor phase, let it not convert into liquid at all. But most of the cases, it goes beyond the operating parameters and it has to get converted into liquid. It is like gas, liquid nitrogen, LPG, liquid petroleum gas. When you leave it into atmosphere, it'll flow out in form of gas. But when you compress it and store it in a cylinder, it will be in liquid form. So the same happens here. There is 760 from one tor if you are coming to 760 tor. There is a compression of 760 times. Now that 760 time compression causes vapor to convert into liquid. What we have done to overcome this problem, how we do is there at this particular point on the pump, there is a gas blast module. So what we do, we open up that module, we insert fresh gas or atmospheric air into the pump at this point. What it does is from pitch one to three, there is compression that is happening till, uh, like this. Suddenly when there is additional gas coming in, it increases the temperature and it increases the temperature to the extent that originally it was supposed to go from four to five. Uh, originally it was supposed to go from 4 to 5 dash and convert into liquid. Now because of increase in temperature it goes from 4 to 5 and stays in vapor form. It does not convert, it does not change phase, it continues to stay in vapor form. This works phenomenally well in some chemical and pharmaceutical companies where the type of solvent that we are using the, has the tendency that once the temperature increases, it will not convert into uh, liquid, it will stay in vapor form. But it is not truly applicable for every process industry. So I am telling you this concept and I will be open to your inputs and in case required, all our standard pumps are equipped with this feature. It is just that we have to open it up. We have to make use of it. 
so we'll have more detailed discussion on this probably at our interaction q and a session like i told you the generation 1 pump which we of course we also started with these generation 1 pumps only way back in 2010 now we have grad graduated to generation 3 pumps the latest one being these the ones that are uh, installed at your site in the recent supply so the new pumps that you are receiving are all non coated they are electrolyzed nickel plated pumps the basic metal of screw and body is also not standard cast iron and ductile iron it is alloy steel so you have a alloy steel body and you have a alloy steel rotor earlier pumps that we were supplying were all side discharged but uh, beginning uh, mid 2017 onwards we started or converted into bottom discharge i will explain you what's the advantage of bottom discharge ceiling like i told you we have already uh, applied for patent we have a triple seal arrangement a unique combination of three different type of seals at the suction for which we have already applied i showed you our patent document in the beginning so this helps our pumps achieve much higher ultimate vacuum as compared to any other uh, competitor pump in the market at the discharge we were earlier using only a mechanical seal uh, am350 bellow which has now been converted into a double lip seal ptfe and a mechanical seal hasi bellow with nitrogen purging so uh, these are some of the enhancements that we continuously keep doing the other big enhancement that we have done which with uh, for which we got the national award also was earlier these pumps were running at 300 meter cube 15 horsepower in late 2013 early 2014 we converted or came up with a new screw profile because of which we were able to do pump out that same 300 meter cube with 10 horsepower thereby ensuring that our pumps become about 30% more power efficient as compared to uh, the original previous pumps uh so now we'll move on to another section this section being of the process vapors uh, uh, what are the contaminants that can enter into the vacuum system so typically we've shown a oil cyst vacuum system on this side because this is working in one of the most uh, aggressive or corrosive environments uh, in uh, uh, used oil refining application where you getting very heavy content of carbon carry over so vapor cond vapor condensation within the vacuum pumps can create nuisance value and should be avoided to the maximum possible extent like i covered in my previous slide the system of gas blast or dilution techniques are used to prevent condensation of vapor in the primary pump another popular approach known as hot pumping is applied to the pump to prevent vapor condensation within the pump thereby enhancing the life of the pump so first contaminant that you can have entering into the vacuum pump is the process vapor or the material that is coming in the most effective terminology technology uh, methodology that we use in this particular case is hot pumping the second is dust or particulate matter when you switch on the pump initially after you have loaded your system the system is at atmospheric pressure at that time you can have process uh, you have lot of air that is being pumped down by the system and with that lot of dust and particulate matter can 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 move on and be carried and passes through the system so proper filtration that is used at the suction ensures that no foreign foreign particles or solids from sublication or are carried and they get excluded from the vacuum system the third source of contamination is the dust from corrosion 
so when we are running the system in uh, when the we, when the uh, gases are aggressive corrosive gases there is a possibility that some corrosion or degradation happens within the system that creates rust type particles when these rust type particles pass through the system they start damaging the internals of the system so major three sources of contaminants first being most critical uh, but not most difficult to control so solvent flushing like i told you earlier prevent pump blockage because of material built up within the system then is eliminate the possibility of accumulation of process material after the pump has stopped these are the two core objectives of uh, solvent flushing uh typically the solvent quantity that is required is 10 liters it can vary depending upon what is the nature of the uh, process uh, material built up how uh, aggressively it mixes with the solvent uh, and whether you are breaking the vacuum before flushing the solvent in our experience typically a 10 liter uh, batch of solvent at the end of every uh, shutdown is good to go with then ensure uh, the second uh, objective that it uh, should fill up is that it should ensure that when we are shutting down the pump the pump is free the discharge of the pump is free if the discharge of the pump is not free this means our solvent flushing cycle is not effective or efficient third is use inlet purge gas along with solvent flushing it becomes uh, very important to break the vacuum and ultimately ensure pump cleaning see the color of the solvent at the discharge if the solvent is coming out neat uh, is uh, is has become transparent back again if it's colorless and it becomes colorless black like in in your case uh, solvent when you are flushing with solvent most of the times the observation has been that solvent becomes black so it should change its color back to colorless this means the pump has totally cleaned from inside now if all of these steps are followed this means next time when you switch on the pump probability that anything will go bad with the pump is very low so here is an example of a typical case of process build up accumulation of process material which can eliminate essential clearances leading to uh, pump failure so here what we have tried to cover is why uh, the pump gets stuck what are the most common reasons so the first reason being that carry over that is passing through the pump is higher than the pumping uh, pump handling capacity typically a 300 meter cube per hour pump can can uh, handle a carry over of up to 7 to 8 liters per minute of liquid if we are uh, sending in more liquid than this because liquid is incompressible and there is very heavy compression that happens within the pump the pump will get stuck or the process uh, the process material that is coming in is high the pump will get stuck so we need to ensure next is highly viscous material that enters into the pump next is proper solvent flushing is not followed and solvent that we are using is not being able to uh, have miscibility proper miscibility with the product so how to resolve such a situation first is block the pump discharge with blind blind flange pour solvent in suction port of the vacuum pump 
fill the pump through and leave for one hour. Rotate the shaft manually with a chain wrench if rotated. Then drain the solvent by removing the discharge, which is block. If not succeeded, repeat step one to four. And if severely jammed, do not uh, take any other action. Contact Everest Vacuum for service support. One caution, one important caution that is required is sometimes we observe that the customer applies so much of excess force on the shaft that the pump shaft gets damaged. So that should never be done. It should always be ensured that you by very uh, tactfully you are able to uh, rotate the shaft and uh, free it by from these process contaminants. The, uh, the inlet, okay, sorry. So this is the cleaning replacement of inlet filter. Typically, like I told you, this filter plays a major role during the initial evacuation. Initially, when there is air within the system, air acts as a medium to carry away dust. Now that dust generally does not mean uh, dust dust. It can be dust which is generated out of the powder within the material that chokes the filter and because it chokes the filter it creates very heavy pressure drop across the filter so once in a while it the filter should be taken out cleaned frequency can be fine-tuned depending upon different applications but once the filter has been cleaned you can get much faster vacuum from that same system as the pressure drop across the filter will be very low. If this step is not done, the capacity and the vacuum both can get affected. These are some typical photographs which we have taken from sites. So customers typically make the mistake that they are running with a choke filter and they tell us that initially when we got the vacuum system, it used to deliver vacuum in four hours. Now it's delivering in six hours. We go, we check the filter, we replace the filter and we are able to uh, uh, get the same level of efficiency back. This is again one photograph that has been taken from the site. Unclean cooling water. So the disadvantage was that there was a lot of scaling that was happening within the body of the screw, uh, body of the uh, pump, the jacket, water jacket. So what did it result in was there was no proper dissipation of heat because there was scaling that happened within the pump. There were localized heat zones that were created. Wherever there was heavy scaling, there were localized heat zones which were created and life of component uh, or coating reduces once uh, proper heat dissipation does not uh, happen. So seven golden rules is uh, I'll just uh, have all the rules stated in front of you. Rule number one is read operation and maintenance manual and follow preventive checkup list. If you don't have a detailed checkup list, we will provide you with one. Second is warm up of the pump. This is again important. We call it as the warm up cycle or the startup cycle. Third is never block the outlet of the pump. Like I told you earlier, and I will be covering in my future slides, positive displacement pump, if you block the discharge, it will keep increasing the current of the pump till the time the weakest link breaks. It can be the shaft, it can be the motor, it can be any component. Luckily, the uh, safety that we have put in is that we measure the current of the motor and we trip the pump. Uh, but it uh, a positive displacement pump, which is both a screw pump as well as a booster pump should never uh, be shut, uh, be uh, operated with a choked, oblique, blocked uh, discharge. 
Rule number four: Use a good inlet or a cold trap filter to protect pump from corrosive vapors or leak contaminants. Now, this filter or leak cold trap can be an efficient condenser. It can be a cyclone. It can be a catch pot. Does not make difference which type of equipment we are using. Our sole objective should be to ensure that pump is used, uh, a vacuum pump is used for what it is designed. Pump is not designed to pump vapors. Pump is designed to pump non-condensables. A condenser is designed to uh, uh, pump and remove uh, vapors. Condenser is also one of the biggest vacuum pumps that is available. We are coming with 100 kgs of solvent and 2 kgs of non-condensables. I pass them through a condenser. 100 kg out of 100 kg, 99, 98 kg uh, so condensable get condensed. Only 2 kg condensable, which is saturated in non-condensables, passes on into the vacuum pump. Rule number five, use gas blast when working with condensable vapors. Rule number six is protect the pump from particulate with an inlet filter. And rule number seven, one of the most important ones, run the pump after use with inlet flows to purge solvent. Oblique contaminants before shutdown. That's the shutdown cycle. Remove any contamination that, is, uh, that accumulates inside the pump. Simply stated, you take care of your vacuum pump and they'll take care of you. Now I'll come to one interesting uh, cross-sectional image just to explain you better. This is the suction of the vacuum pump. This is the discharge of the vacuum pump. At the suction, we have a patented triple sealing design. That is this design. It's a combination of one seal, second seal and third seal. So this is one seal, this is second seal, and this is third seal. All three work in tandem to ensure that uh, the ultimate vacuum that you receive is very high. At the discharge, what we have, our earlier pumps only used to have mechanical seal, which were AM350. These were stainless steel SS316 uh, bellow seals. Now we have upgraded these seals to hash C and uh, there is one calrez o-ring here and there is one calrez o-ring here and there is another secondary lip seal over here. So at the discharge you have double lip seal plus mechanical seal and at the suction you have double lip seal piston rings and flanger. And on the outside there is another lip seal which prevents the oil, lubricating oil that is in this chamber to come from coming out. So this is a tertiary seal. It is not a very critical seal, but this is the seal in which in your boosters also you are facing a problem. This is a cut section diagram of all the components that are there. Many a times why I have included this photograph is for you to be easily able to identify which component in your pump has gone wrong. Many a times I receive a complaint that sir, we don't know which component has gone wrong. So whenever uh, you'll have, you'll get a copy of this, you can keep it with you. Whenever there is something going wrong, you can just highlight that this is the component that has gone wrong. This is again another view, a detailed view of which component goes where with the same numbering that was there in the previous chart also. Similarly for booster, booster also has, so there are different types of sealings here. These are the seals and then you have a lip seal at the discharge. This is the seal that is currently failing in your uh, current application. Here also I have used an exploded view with highlighting different components part number wise. They part numbers are the same across every model. So you can just tell us that EVB 30 and part number one. So we'll be able to identify that that is the body. And this is the component that we are looking for at replacement. Same way exploded view of booster for better uh, understanding. Now this is the PNID 
uh, or, or the this is the GA of your system. These are two systems that have been supplied. First system is SuperVac 10,000. Next system is this is the PNID of that same 10,000 meter cube per hour. So at the top you have a booster which is 10,400 meter cube. Then is another booster which is 4,680 meter cube. Then is the third booster. So these are three boosters in series. Then there is a two meter square condenser. Then there is a uh, filter come demister unit. And then there is the dry screw vacuum pump. This is the latest system that has been supplied. Now what when I was speaking to uh, your team, I uh, was told that we are facing a problem of material carryover in this booster. Uh, possible reason for that material uh, coming in and uh, choking this booster can be a and I was also told that there are three condensers that are installed installed before this booster. So I have just kept these photographs here when we have our uh, interactive session right now. These photographs will help me explain uh, in a better way. Uh, this is again the other system that we have. And these were the original loads that were provided to us for designing of this particular vacuum system. This is a typical case study of service and how service that we do improves uh, the or ensures you are getting better mean time between failures and a reduction in your operating cost. So a typical example that we have covered here, uh, probably I'll have uh, Ritesh uh, take over Rakeshi. Hello. Yes, true. True. Yeah. So, <coughs> Ritesh, probably if you can come in now, maybe five minutes, and then we can come down to our interactive session. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes, sir, yes, sir, yeah. yeah. <laughs> think, think. Hello, hello, am I audible? Yes. You can keep telling me to move the slides. I'll keep taking them forward. You are audible. Yeah, yeah. Rakeji, would you like to take over? Just, just give me a minute. Yes, yes. Hello. Yes, true. yes, true. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Yeah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes,
Hey, I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Likewise, it's 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 it's, it's, it's coming from, from your from your side only. only. It's from our side, but I don't think it's from our side. Okay, I I think uh, let's move forward here. Otherwise, we'll be short on we'll be short on time. Yeah, yeah. So some maintenance programs that we have, we have the AMC that is the annual maintenance contract. What all is typically covered in the AMC? We've covered over here. Then we have the comprehensive maintenance, which we call as the CMCs. The difference being in these is that the consumable spares are also included in uh, comprehensive maintenance contracts. This comes with a disclaimer that uh, systems should not be should be run under the guidelines that uh, are are uh, uh, or the SOPs that we are uh, we are telling you. Uh, the objective of this being that uh, for customer it it uh, it is a uh, step towards moving into the direction of vacuum being looked as a utility so typically recommended spare part lists and the change frequency first 6 months you have what all parts you need to change then you have year one spares and then you have year two spares many a times we observe that there is a possibility that customer is using spurious spares or inferior spares i personally feel that we have tried and that is a policy that we follow at everest we don't want to earn out of our spares we want to keep our spares to the base minimum possible extent so that it supports our service teams but at the same time it is it is uh, it is for the customer like sometime the seals that we use at everest are all made by flowserve or their counterpart company in korea because we have a technical collaboration of these pumps with korea so there is a korean company uh, which is again a flow serve company and flow serve sanmar in india local seals people use but i strongly no, do not recommend them they even though look and feel the same but do not perform the same way there is a reason why flow serve is flow serve around the world same way with uh, lip seals lip seals there are many people who are manufacturing lip seals in india but for such applications uh, where lip seal becomes critical uh, what is the source of white on which batch so typically the seals that we are using are uh, all branded seal uh, bearings lot of spurious bearings are there so every customer that i talk with i say in shorter run you may save on money but in the longer run you definitely uh, there is a cost attached uh, the shutdown that you have to take because of uh, such cases you will have problems then these are some of the it will come as a part of the format to you the inspection so what is what are the inspections that uh, that are to be done on daily basis what are to be done on mon monthly quarterly and yearly basis there is uh, coupling mounting typically here we observe a lot of times uh, when the pump is opened up and it is assembled again the shafts are not properly Uh, aligned which leads to failure because these are all pumps which are running at very high rpm they are not running at 900 or 1500 they are running at 3600 rpm that is even faster than a two pole motor because they are running at 60 hertz uh, alignment becomes very critical 
the couplings that we are providing in our newest uh, systems are all taper lock bush couplings these are self aligning couplings and they come with a motor bracket where the possibility is uh, of any uh, misalignment is very low but in the bigger machines obviously the uh, motor is not aligned on the on 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 the booster itself because of the very fact that the motor weight itself is very heavy so we need to ensure uh, proper coupling alignment seal failure at the discharge can also be a result of uh, misproper uh, improper coupling alignment oil like i have told you these are the two pumps two grades of oil that we recommend uh, in your case you are using this pump so uh, approximately 1.6 liter is the consumption of oil and in standard pump it is t46 and in cx pump it's a, it's a synthetic oil that we uh, use after this uh, like i told you in the beginning we have a technical services group which we just recently launched last year uh, last uh, year we launched it uh, which is called as the tsg uh, so this is uh, the link uh, priyanshu can you just paste this link on the chat for everybody so any time any questions you have you can just yes yes sir uh, it's a small form you can fill it up and uh, you'll have somebody from our expert team uh, getting back to you and uh, understanding uh, and devoting time to uh, your problem it can be any idea we are open to all uh, inputs and we can give you our take on as to what we think out of our experience of working with so many industries the next url which is also an interesting technical bulletin which we have published in ours it's a 2025 page bulletin so this url also priyanshu can you please paste uh, if you download it will give you it's a good small book which tells you about boosters and how uh, vacuum pumps work and what is uh, what all can you uh, how uh, how can you use these uh, vacuum pumps more efficiently what is all so it's basics about vacuum but it's a good uh, technical bulletin so with this i come to an end of this presentation and now i am open to question and answers and uh, interaction wherein i can give you my uh, suggestions please thank you thank you very much, very much sir, sir. Thank you, sir for your and you are getting double voice or no no sir i can hear you clearly so was was so uh, uh, फ्रॉम <laughs> Solvent after the force force so that so that all all contaminants can. Sir, your voice is breaking. Uh, uh, in between, it's breaking. If you can. Uh... hello priyanshu can you hear me 
हेलो यस 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 ओके यस सर सर योर वॉइस इज कैन यू रिपीट योर सेल्फ प्लीज हेलो यांशु सिस्टम so should i continue speaking <laughs> but my problem is when i am talking i need to look at somebody to talk to make it interactive otherwise it's a one way traffic can everyone hear me uh, matrix team can you hear me i can hear you you kalin ji i can see everyone's online okay so i'll continue i'll continue with what i <laughs> with what all i have in my mind and probably let's see how we'll take it forward after that so there were three on uh, during my interaction with matrix team there were three observations that were made the first observation was that this particular booster is getting choked now ideally this booster should not get choked this is evb60 that is the secondary booster after this ideally this booster should not get choked because at this point the level of vacuum is not very high but as the case may be like in two cases the same problem that's coming that this booster is getting choked one thing that we can possibly do in such a case or the first thought that comes into my mind is that what could possibly be happening there is excessive process material that is getting carried over because of the heavy suction heavy suction of this booster evb200 booster this booster is currently placed at a height on top of this kid what i uh, in this case what uh, one possibility that we can do is to have a catch pot at the discharge of evb200 now this catch pot if required designs or uh, designs can be shared by us it is basically a, a cyclonic trap what i am being able to understand is that process material that is coming is getting uh, is forming a thin layer on top of the booster which is resulting in choking of the booster one possibility can be that we can introduce solvent flushing there is a provision at the suction of every booster if i show it to you over here at this point on the neck on the neck of the body there is a provision for solvent flushing so you just need to open up a tap and you'll be able to install uh, install a solvent flushing line or better solution that i understand than that is to have so this is the existing setup that is there and this is what is proposed to have a catch pot over here which can get connected to this receiver itself now whatever is coming in over here the possibility that it will be able to travel back up is very low under vacuum and inside this also how it will work is that it will have a it will have a pipe that pipe will uh, that pipe will have will go somewhere till here and you'll have another pipe that will be coming out from here 
this is again a compromise because ideally process material should not reach over here the condenser like i was told there are three condensers that are installed before the the pump those three condensers should be able to trap the vapor that is coming we can change the utility of one of the condensers to make it more efficient or we can change the design of that type of condenser this i would say is will give us relief but it is it is a fix it is not the permanent solution and it will come in tune to the the contaminate the the uh, the current setup that is there for the other 200 system next uh, issue that was raised was that the discharge of this pump is getting choked when we open up the discharge pipeline that pipeline is choked for this pump this pipeline is choked here what i propose is a we need to work on our solvent flushing uh, more efficiently if discharge is choked this means even though we are flushing but that flushing is not solving the objective or the purpose for where what it has been intended for so what we need to do in such cases we need to improve on the uh, flushing style by either increasing the time or by ensuring that we are breaking the vacuum the pump when it stops the golden rule that we need to follow or the only rule that everyone in the plant needs to follow is when the pump stops it has to be clean it is like when i am cooking food when i go out of my kitchen in the night all my utensils are washed fresh and ready for next morning that same objective will apply here when the pump stops or whenever we shut down for the night we ensure that the internals of the system are clean the disadvantage uh, the the problem is that if we overnight leave the solid inside the pump when the pump stops it is operating at about 100 degrees so at that time all all sol all material that is built up in the pump is all hot and polymerized when it is left overnight and the pump cools down that material solidifies to form crystals small 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 crystals it's like i have uh, sugar syrup i leave it overnight in the morning it will all be crystals till the time it is syrup it is easy to clean but as soon as it forms crystals inside the pump there is stationary part and there is rotary part now crystal is stuck between stationary and rotary part as soon as i switch on the pump i am providing 10 horsepower to the pump what will it do it will grind all these crystals inside and throw them out of the pump so the first 2 3 minutes all the crystals that are left inside that have uh, become cold or have condensed overnight or due to the shutdown will start causing scratches on the internals and what is this internal this is coating so what happens to the coating it gets scratched so chemically it is not getting affected but as soon there is a scratch on the surface of the coating that uh, causes the base metal to get exposed that is the point from where corrosion starts and then there is a chain reaction that it will start removing coating now to prevent this what we have done at everest i will tell you that also what we have done we have tried to because this is a problem no matter how much we tell our customers but on ground implementation has always been a challenge so to prevent this what we have done is we have uh, where is that
Priyanshu, my screen is visible. Dry screw vacuum pump. Yes, Within yes. In last ten years. So the latest pumps that you have, they are non-coated pumps. This means there is no soft coating inside the pump. There is electrolyzed nickel plating on the internals of the pump. This electrolyzed nickel plating is heat treated to increase the hardness. So what we are trying to do, because we are not being able to control crystal formation and solvent flushing. To eliminate, to enhance the life of the pump, we are making the internals harder and harder. But that is not the permanent solution. You still, it is just that my internals have become harder. The crystals will cause less scratches, but they will still cause scratch. The best way is to pour, to have proper solvent flushing and ensure that. uh the internals are clean when the uh, at the time when we shut down the system in fact what i am proposing or what our design team is working with us is to have a, over here to have a, a transparent glass uh, installed before the silencer so that when the operator flushes he is able to see that the flushing that the solvent that is coming out after the solvent flushing is that has that become clear and has my line become totally clean before i shut down third point that i was discussing and i was told was that we are facing the seal uh, issue uh, seals at site are uh, failing now that seal what we are talking about is this seal the seal that is installed over here this seal so this seal we are dispatching new fresh seal and maybe these o rings uh, were what we were talking about two o rings need to be used here never will we use one o ring that is why i am sharing these with you so that you are also aware as to what is being used and the seal that we'll be using here we are dispatching to you uh, one set of new seals on foc basis for each pump they will be replaced by our technician i think uh, ritesh vishal is here on call or he is attending from site he is attending, he's attending from, from, site, from site sir, sir. okay so vishal is also there he will be the designated person who will have all issues being reported into him whether technicians change no problem vishal will be the central point and ritesh will be the central point they'll be uh, updating and reporting after every uh, every uh, session that we have with you uh, and uh, on ground technicians may vary depending upon their availability but vishal and ritesh will be two contact points uh, escalation 1 and escalation 2 who will have complete uh, data available as to what is happening and uh, serial wise history of the pumps ground level interaction probably with technicians is not required any uh, interaction that needs to be done should either happen with vishal uh, or uh, ritesh or priyanshu so that all three will have uh, very good communication amongst themselves so these were the three uh, issues that were highlighted to me and uh, at back end we've tried to control and uh, address all three maybe in the next couple of uh, days or the next week uh, you start seeing uh, movement on ground at site as well but again not limiting to this i would like to tell you once again that ultimately we can only help 
support interact with you on ground matrix team has to uh, take the lead we can commit you that we will never fall short we will always be standing with you behind you but if you ask me what solvent to use probably i'll tell you that you are a better judge of your process than i am i can tell you that what is the objective or what is the reason behind why we do this but uh, i would look for support and guidance from you on the process side because there you have much better experience and understanding than what we do so i think i am pretty much done any specific question if you have i can answer we have about 10 minutes uh, right now or otherwise we can close this session has been recorded we'll be sharing copy of the recording also rakesh ji yes yes i, I think think kalim ji kalim ji क्विकली what you can do is priyanshu you can share the invite on his phone and somebody can open it up on the phone also i'm saying i'm saying phone, phone se kar lo na sasur sasur kalip ji kalip ji priyanshu is trying to call you, call you on your landline on, on your mobile
First is that currently the boosters are set up and and connect connecting the cash between individual and this is not possible at this time. Okay. Currently, this and is second, the second point. Is that the And during, and during the intermittent uh, flushing, because uh, uh, there, there is no flushing of the third, third, no auto flushing in boosters is possible. We can take a tapping from the existing solvent uh, tank itself and uh, have flushing being done through the boosters. But you see, what I am trying to make a point is that typically flushing in boosters should not be required. If we are getting material carryover in boosters, we should first answer the principal question that why the condensers that are on the top are allowing that material to come or reach to the boosters. In the existing systems also, where we have booster supplied earlier, we've never faced a problem of excessive built up uh, coming in. Now, none other boosters is getting choked. It is only this particular booster that is getting choked. So to control the uh, material that is entering into this booster, Either the option is we install a catch pot here and start a collecting uh, material here or the other option is in, in line prior to the system. We install some, tri uh, some type of entrapment uh, which is typically not a filter filtration device. But it's uh, because here I would not like to compromise uh, or uh, you or get a pressure drop. Uh, probably uh, this type of an, uh, an arrangement would work most efficiently if I am not being able to entrap or condense my vapor at the initial condenser. Have I been able to answer the question? Can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Probably what I feel is if you are using one laptop and mic of the laptop, then you'll have to speak in front of the screen of the laptop because that mic is unidirectional. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sir, 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 sir,
uh, vapor form. So then you will face, you will not face any problem. But sir, as uh, when we are discussing regarding your this gas blast system, gas ballast system, okay, and this liquid flashing system. In the liquid flashing system, we have to break the vacuum. Then we are reaching certainly uh, uh, we are not in vacuum, so that our flashing material are not getting vaporized. So my flashing material is doing very good washing in the system. Correct, sir? Yes. Ah, but in the gas system, you are talking about that my vapor, whatever the vapor are there inside, it should not get liquid. Yes. So how these two are different? And how these two? Because one side I am running with the liquid for the flashing. Another side I am telling that my vapor should not get liquid. Okay, I will, I will, I will, I have understood your question. I will answer it like this. You see, the, these are two separate points. One is liquid that is, be, that, that is uh, liquid that is converted from vapor. Now where that vapor is coming from, that vapor is coming from the process. Now what is that process vapor? That is this. I will just go yeah. to the presentation. That is this methyl ester vapor. Okay. Yeah. Now methyl ester vapor under heavy compression in the pump gets converted to liquid. That liquid if left inside the pump solidifies and that is what actually starts causing uh, starts jamming. How does it look yeah. when it when it when it solidifies? It becomes something like this. These are side photographs of the yeah. pump. It will become something like uh, it will become something like this. The, like this, this black vapor. Yeah. Now that is what is harmful because it is not. It, it, it is what is the cause of the problem. The solvent that we flush in is a low boiler which is, which is miscible in this. Typically, like currently, what is the solvent that you are using in your application for flushing? We are using biodiesel. Say you are using biodiesel. Now, biodiesel will dissolve this methyl ester. Okay. When biodiesel dissolves methyl ester, I want biodiesel to be in form of liquid to be able to dissolve. If biodiesel gets converted into uh, vapor, it will not dissolve methyl ester. Yeah. Now, when I say hot pumping or using gas blast, what I mean by that is in condition one, I do not let methyl ester generate only. Mm. So how can I do that? By not allowing methyl ester vapor converting into solid. Yes. That is part number one. So I am trying to solve the problem by two methods. A, trying to control or minimize methyl ester getting converted into liquid b whatever methyl ester has gotten converted into liquid by flushing it with biodiesel and removing and throwing it out of the pump when i am trying to clean the pump you understand my point sir yes i understand but the problem is we uh, whatever you show in the picture that we are not getting in the liquid state these are all becoming solid state. So my biodiesel also not able to take it out from the pump itself because we check, we put all this material outside, we put all this material inside of our biodiesel uh, to take that whether it will be dissolved in 24 hours or not. It not even dissolved in 24 hours. Also. That's then we need to then we need to change the solvent. Then we need to use a solvent which will dissolve methyl ester. Okay. Okay. 
This means that biodiesel is not the right solvent to flush. We need to use a sol. You see, it will convert into solid. It will convert into solid. It will convert into solid. You cannot stop it from converting into solid. But what you can do is you can use a solvent which will dissolve that solid and make it. Our purpose is just to remove it from the pump. Now the easiest way is that make it miscible in a solvent and remove it. Selection of the solvent should be such so that it 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 dissolves and flows out automatically. Basic simple examples, sir. I will go back to household uh, uh, kitchen. You see, you get an ad in the TV. Oh, nimbu, nimbu dalawa hai. Is is me? Wo kya? Oh, that's soap to to wash utensils. So you'll have a lady who's cleaning utensils, rubbing very hard, and then you'll get a lady who has uh, nimbu in her. Uh, <laughs> and that nimbu is just trying to add to remove the oil strains that are there uh, in the in that uh, vessel so that same objective fundamental is the same so, uh, no that is i understand sir but the problem is with the uh, means whenever i am getting my uh, contaminated or my uh, liquids inside of the pump Whether these farms are being designed so drastically in between the level of inlet and outlet state that in the outlet this vapor can become solid, whether that is also one of the reasons. You see, sir, right now at the discharge, at we'll take an example from your application itself. uh last saturday i was uh, talking to the team and i was told that our discharge is blocked with solid process material yeah now if you see the system if you see the system the system is so complex you see from here it is coming booster 1 booster 2 booster 3 then this bend then you have a condenser then you have a filter trap then you have uh, a demister trap inside this so you have a filter and you have a demister and then you have the screw pump all of the material is passing through this and coming to the discharge solid solid material is being observed over here at the discharge point of the screw okay yeah, yeah. now this solid cannot pass through so much so complex path it is only vapor that can pass through such complex path when i say vapor i mean gas correct now what happens so one thing is very clear that at the suction of the backup pump there is gas that is coming now when i compress that gas by 760 times that gas gets converted into liquid now if i leave that liquid there in the pipeline overnight that liquid will solidify there and get converted into solid and after at maintenance when you open up the pump you see solid uh, entrapment in the pipeline all that solid is solid uh, that has gotten converted because of the high compression in the vacuum pump so what we need to do is just one simple exercise use a solvent that has uh, the power to uh, for miscibility of uh, like you are saying that my biodiesel doesn't uh, dissolve uh, this uh, uh, methyl ester then this means biodiesel is not the right solvent we need to go back to the chemist and ask him what is the right solvent that can dissolve methyl ester or whatever that compound that is getting accumulated there if we use that solvent probably result, drastically result will change for you so uh, that that one thing we have to work uh, immediately uh, but the, the thing is that uh, we not only getting the discharge choked only from the base we are recently we removed pv 30 Also, in between booster, 
and there also we found it is a part is highly and is the same nucleus in the same system when yeah. we remove the dv30 in between that booster sir that also we are getting the discharge having lot of nuclear charge for that nuclear yes the booster discharge of that is one second thing when we are doing the flushing in the base pump there we have the parting of the nitrogen at the end both end so what is happening that end part is not getting the material that plastic material so when we are opening it, it we are getting the material are stuck in the both the end side having in between it is clean but the end both the end because of the parting we are the same thing so it is having the material accumulated continuously so that is also one of the concern because when we are doing the purging that the nitrogen purging is continuing and it is getting such type of problem can you repeat yourself sir i didn't fully understand your question uh, sir uh, this uh, this uh, purging in during particularly for the flushing of the base pump there is a nitrogen purging running continuously near the field both the inside correct na sir near the seal that is nitrogen purging yes that is continuously running uh, absolutely correct yes so, so the plastic material is not leaking up to that point so when we open the uh, pump we found lot of deposits are near the seal itself near the end side of the uh, screw most of the deposition is happening at the end of that screw right yes absolutely correct most of the deposition will always happen there the deposition will be there but the yeah, you see if you see this photograph if you see this photograph this is the discharge side plate on discharge side plate can you see how much process material is getting accumulated so to prevent this only what we have done we have installed on the new design what we have done is on this pump what we have installed on the discharge side to prevent the mechanical seal we have installed an additional ptfe seal okay now the job of this ptfe seal is to prevent that excessive carry over from uh, reaching the mechanical seal now what you are saying is that my seal purge way because of my seal purge and to seal purge my material carry over is getting accumulated here yeah but it is the other way round because of that seal purge your 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 uh, lip seal and uh, mechanical seal are protected you see the seal purge that i am talking about the nitrogen seal you have two types of seal one is the nitrogen n2 seal purge and the other one is uh, where is that photo so no, my 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 thinking my uh, uh, is not recommendation what i am thinking in this direction the that uh, uh, our seal damages can happen when we are running the system in the vacuum highly vacuum system yes but uh, by putting nitrogen my uh, overall vacuum getting uh, damage means i am not getting vacuum after putting the nitrogen so during flushing why i require such nitrogen sealing continuously that is what i am thinking means whether we can eliminate during flushing on the seal you can eliminate there is no issue but on the, you you see there are two there are two points from where you are sending nitrogen one is on the seal on the mechanical seal the other one is inlet purge n2 inlet purge yes. inlet purge nitrogen you are giving to break the vacuum because when pump is running it will start generating vacuum to break that vacuum we are uh, giving extra air or nitrogen from outside as a load so that uh, the vacuum breaks and the solvent does not evaporate or form vapors yes absolutely 
so n2 seal purge what you are saying you can stop but the consumption is so low that it will not give you a very major benefit the n2 uh, one minute ishan n2 n2 seal purge what is our lpm consumption it is this 5 mpm sir and what is the inlet n2 inlet seal purge consumption that is that is sir, sir 300 300 lpm. lpm so you see 300 versus 5 lpm you are only you will only be able to save 5 of 5 lpm at that point at that time no, I am not uh, talking about the savings, sir. I am talking because of that steel part, that flashing material is not reaching up to the end, end point. I understand. I understand. Huh? Yeah. Uh, what you are saying apparently makes sense. Yeah. We can try. Okay, so that we will we'll try with Vital. With one yes. Ishan, you are making a note of this. You will have to brief Ishan. And, uh, sir, oil seal is uh, Sir, we have specifically for your application, we have ordered for some special seals, some special material seals. It will take two to three weeks to reach us. That is why I said that we will dispatch those seals to you, uh, one set for each pump. Okay. And sir, uh, the, uh, last thing I know, whether we should put two seals? No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Not required. Not required. No, not required. Okay. Not required, and the this seal also has to be uh, put in a special way. It is not put in the st standard way. It has to be put uh, in the opposite direction. Uh, it is there in my cross-sectional drawing. The drawing that I have shared. I just need to. Okay, I will not. So I here I have shown I have shown in my booster I have shown the cross section also it is uh, put in a special way. So these seals I have ordered uh, we have already uh, as per my last discussion on last Saturday after that immediately we had ordered for seals. Uh, okay. It will take some time for to reach us. We'll uh, we want you to experiment with those seals. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, uh, sir, we'll see after, uh, as per your recommendation, uh, we'll start doing some work from our side also, as well as uh, uh, your team is always there uh, to help us. And I think we'll get a better uh, output. And at the same time, we are now uh, also trying to uh, purchase some more vacuum pump for our existing system as well to get uh, uh, redundancy in our system. So that is also, we are working on that for another three, four pumps that required to make redundancy in our system. So please suggest us something more better uh, uh, designed uh, system, uh, particularly base pump, which can give us a better result with our uh, application. Because you know better in our system how we are running. And at the same time, I am also working for a better solvent, which can be a good for flashing that we can work on. And we will see how we can achieve that. And uh, last, uh, but not actually the least one, that is your support. Your service team support is always required. And as you guided us, you given a very wonderful uh, one, uh, presentation. We hope we will get the same one from your side so that I can also discuss with my team. I can also give a little bit brief, not like you, but at least I will try to give my team the same uh, messages what you told today. So uh, please share with us uh, the your presentation so that I can, uh, I can share with definitely. my team. And uh, some more uh, things I am going to do related to the maintenance schedule and all. So that also I will share with your engineers so that they can also share with you uh, to get that whether we are in the same page or not. So that also I will do. 
and uh, once again sir thank you very much for giving your precious time for us for matrix and uh, i will convey the uh, things to uh, um, our kunal sir also and uh, thank you very much thank you sir thank you abhi i will be sharing a copy of the presentation as well as the recording of this presentation so that you can uh, probably see through it or have your staff see through it once again uh, in fact yeah. we have our our uh, team uh, of application engineering and service all attending with a singular objective that all of us are at the same page and we are all committed to serve you better and ensure that you succeed because in your success lies our success thank you yes definitely sir <laughs> because we are our system is completely depend on backroom you know yes sir and nowadays we are having only average backroom system in our plant yes. so your support and your guidance your new technological thing to require always definitely sir okay sir definitely okay sir thank you thank you thank you right sir thank you very much sir thank you thank you thank you thank you very much thank you thank you, thank you, thank you sir so i think if we have uh, answered everything we can close yes sir yes